Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Now when last we met, I was touring the Pacific Northwest with a load of beer. Well, I dropped off my beer and I got some wood. I took that wood back to Colorado and delivered my wood. Now I got a bunch of plumbing supplies. Probably, I don't know, some hot water heaters, some toilet bowls, and a couple of faucets. And that is going to a new place for me, which is Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Easy for me to say. I've never been to South Dakota, so I'm looking forward to it. There's uh, some sort of landmark there. What's that thing with the four guys on it? Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. That's in South Dakota. Although I suspect it's probably not right in the middle of downtown Sioux Falls. <laughs> That'd be something like, hey, there's Walmart. Oh, there's Mount Rushmore. So we're going to South Dakota. I can't wait. So let's get started. All right, I just made my pit stop. Got fuel because I was on E. <laughs> and now I'm heading so my goal is to make it to some place called Ainsworth, Nebraska. Ainsworth, Nebraska. There's a Conoco there with a dirt lot. Um, see, here's the problem with small towns like that. They don't have truck stops. So you gotta find some dirt lot or a on-ramp or off-ramp. I'm gonna be in the middle of nowhere. Um, I mean nowhere. So, I found a dirt lot and that's good enough for me. So let's get on the road and boogie. And next time I see you, I'll be in Ainsworth. Later. I finally made it to Ainsworth, but then it was time to find something to eat. So you know me, I took off on foot. Right now I'm passing by some seedy motel and I'm looking for something to eat. Up ahead, there's something called Local House 20, and then there's Big John's. So, it's a coin toss. I don't know what either one of them have. <laughs> Neither one of them looks great, but we're going to walk in one of them, and we'll get it figured out. Well, Local House 20 is what I chose to eat, and it was okay, I guess. After that, it was nighty night time for me because I was tired and I had a full belly. Well, I woke up the next morning, got ready, got on the road, drove for about four hours. Well, two of those hours was dense, heavy fog. And I'm talking about like an eighth of a mile of visibility. Now you remember my pity party from the last video, hopefully, about driving in the snow. But fog is just as bad because it's just that intense driving. You're holding on, you're trying to look through it. Maybe if I just stare hard enough I'll be able to see. well you can't see because it's fog but and so it just wears you out because you have to be so alert and you can't you can't lose focus for even a second 10 seconds because all of a sudden you can just out of nowhere boom there's tail lights and you so I took some shots of that you'll see that anyway made it to Sioux Falls got unloaded right now you see the truck is shaking I'm getting loaded <sighs> and after that I'll be back on the road all right you remember a couple of weeks ago I did the uh, Pulp Fiction thing uh, it was sort of a challenge to myself can I get it right in one shot without looking it up see how much I can remember well I was just sitting here they're unloading my trailer right now and I had time to kill. So I was listening to my Janet Jackson playlist. That's Miss Jackson to you. Anyway, I got to thinking about her brother, not Jermaine, Michael. And I thought, you know, at the end of the song Thriller, they had that spoken word part. I wonder if I can do that same thing. Off the top of my head, one shot with no mistakes. So that's the challenge of the day today to see if I can do it. And I also thought, why is it every time I try to do one of these monologues, I pick some guy who's got a really distinctive voice that almost nobody can imitate? You know, the first one was Samuel L. Jackson. Now it's Vincent Price. He's the guy that did the thing. And so, whatever. Just my luck, right? Okay, so here we go. One shot. Hopefully no mistakes. Y'all can fact check me later. Darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. 
creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize y'all's neighborhood. And whosoever shall be found without the soul for getting down must stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell. The foulest stench is in the air, the funk of 40,000 years, and grisly ghouls from every tomb are closing in to seal your doom. And though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver, for no mere mortal can resist the evil of the thriller. <laughs> I said, man, I think I nailed it. I'm going to have to fact check myself. And if I got it right, I'll put a little check mark there. But I think that was it. So boom, challenge complete. And now I'll just have to wait for the next one and see if I can do it. Now y'all know I do my fair share or even more than my fair share of whining, complaining, and belly aching about the weather and the roads and poor me. Well, I just want to show y'all the flip side to that. Nearly every morning I get to wake up not wake up to but I get to see this because I'm already awake obviously these beautiful sunrises this was in South Dakota just look at that man I mean I gotta say I don't like to be too sentimental but this is just beautiful so after South Dakota it was back to you know where Denver Colorado so I had to retrace my steps and just pretty much go back the same route so that led to today's trucker rant man what is this this company i work for has certain routes if you go into a wherever there's a route book like we want you to take this route but for some reason sioux falls is the most convoluted circuitous route to get to sioux falls they got me on this back highway look how narrow it is my right tires are just on the inside of the white line. My left tires are over the yellow line. I'm in the other lane of traffic. Look, who came up with, look, the, 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 the lane's only seven feet wide. The truck's eight feet wide. Oh man, I hate taking these back road goat tracks because what happens if I break down, get a flat tire, I got nowhere to park, nowhere to pull over? Man! And I hate these windy roads. I'm gonna get to the point where it's like, why do we gotta go to say, well, it's uh, six miles shorter, Jason. Okay, you know what? Six miles, that's what? One gallon of fuel, here's $3.50, or just take it out of my check, I'm going my way. Oh man, I am in the middle of nowhere, too probably don't have any cell phone service nobody lives out here I still have 20 more miles of this why is this road so bumpy the whole road is like it's like 24 miles of going over overpasses oh man this is uh, this is more than just frustrating I cannot wait to get off this road Look at how bumpy this road is. It's like this for 24 miles. With all these hairpin curves. I don't know why they make us come this way. This is terrible. I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm going back to Janet Jackson. I'll talk to y'all later. Goodbye. Okay, in every video, I try to show y'all a little something about the truck driving lifestyle or parts of the job that most people who don't do it wouldn't think of. And today's lesson, showers. Okay, first thing I need to explain is most trucking companies have a deal work, worked out with one of the major uh, truck stop chains to get fuel discounts if their drivers only fuel at those places. So for my company, it's Pilot and Flying J, uh, which is the same company. So I can only fuel at Pilot and Flying J and I have the rewards card, so I get rewards every time I fuel up and that includes free showers. So I pretty much will never shower at a Loves, a TA, a Petro, Sap Brothers, wherever. So keep that in mind and we're gonna start this with the good old Pilot Flying J app. You go to the app, 
when you're at the truck stop already, it already knows which location you're at. So you just tap on reserve a shower and it sends you a code. If you're in the truck stop, sometimes you'll hear, you know, guest number 21, your shower is now ready. Please proceed to shower six. Well, that's a guy who either paid at the cash register or reserved a shower on his app. So that's what I did in this case. And here's a little video of what it looks like inside of there. There's a certain, I don't know, maybe misconception that these truck stop showers are dirty and dingy and gross. They're actually really clean. They're tile. Um, they've got everything you need. Sink, shower, toilet. Uh, they even have soap on the wall. So I have no complaints with them. Now, I'm not saying that there are no dirty, dingy, gross truck stop showers. I'm sure they're out there. But if you pretty much stick to Pilot, Flying J, or the major chains, generally you're gonna get a good, clean shower. Now, here's the next part. So if you can't take a shower, you've got your stuff in the truck that you can use. First of all, face wipes. Clean your face. Next, dude wipes. And these things are just, you know, moist, moist towelettes, as they say. 30 of them, I think there's 30 in here, costs nine bucks. And so it takes about four to really wipe yourself down good. But hey, there's your face, your uh, body taken care of. Then you have your bag with a toothbrush and toothpaste. And of course, a bottle of water that you keep in your truck. And you can just brush your teeth in the truck deodorant, wash my face, all of that stuff. So it can be done. You can stay clean without a shower every single day if you just kind of stick to it, but there's ways to do it. You know, it's a boring video when all you got is footage of me arriving at a customer, but I don't know. To me, it's a little interesting because uh, there's this thing we go through when we arrive at a place we've never been to before. You're just hoping, I hope it's okay there's some place for me to pull over and whatever if you remember one of my earlier videos i was in gardenia california and it was a nightmare well that was a nightmare this one is the complete opposite it couldn't get any better than this so there's going to be no fancy production on this or anything like that i'm just going to kind of roll the film and let y'all see what it's like to arrive at a shipper or a receiver in this case it was a shipper Okay, looking for Cherokee Street. It's supposed to be not this one. Ah, that one, okay. Nice wide intersection. Okay, it says turn. Street. All right, so I can tell this is like an industrial area, trucking area. So I'm not too worried about, oh, what if I pass it up? Where am I going to turn around? I'll find somewhere generally in a place like this. There's Fortune Transport. I don't know how fortunate you would be to work for them or drive for them. Okay, here it is, North D Avenue. Bell. Now we have to do the song and dance, the usual one. Where's the receiving door? Where's the receiving office, etc. I see a bunch of dots here. So there's a bunch of bay doors and stuff. And here's a guy waiting to get loaded. Okay, we can back in there easily. There's no parking this side of the street. Well, what about park on this side of the street? How about then?
All right, so this is where you put your flashes on, and you get out and hoof it. Now, my pickup is scheduled for 2 o'clock p.m. It's now 10 a.m. So they very well might tell me, hey, you're too early, bro. Time to go. Come back at 2. I hope not. But we'll see. I'm here. Check back with you later. Okay, they said they'd load me early, and I'm way early. So now y'all get to see me back in a spot. So right off the bat, it's messed up because I'm right up alongside the curb. Curb. And I need to get back there next to that little small box truck. Okay. Uh, so I got to work my way away from the curb without hitting it. Let's see how we do. I can't cut the wheel. In. Oh! Damn. Yeah, there's no way. Not from. I'm gonna have to pull forward to get get off the curve. You ever see how some people they say curve instead of curb? Like, hey, watch that curb right there. <laughs> Never. They say curve instead of curb. Okay. Well, I'm off the curb. But now my trailer is pointing the wrong way. Oh man, I need my trucking skills for this one. Okay, my trailer is now pointed straight down the street. Glad this ain't a busy street, otherwise I'd be in a world of pain. Street, street, street. And then it's hard to angle. I'm so far away from the dock. It's hard to guide the trailer when, uh, when you're so far away. It ain't that hard because of my trucking skills. <laughs> Do you have to have your head on a swivel, constant motion because what happens is if you just stare at the back of your trailer in the mirror somebody's gonna come around on the other side some guy in a wheelchair or something you'll hit him oh man don't want to do that okay so cut it a little too tight but that's no problem you can never get a 90 degree back in one shot. Part of the procedure is a pull forward. I mean, I guess if you had a lot of room. Anyway, you see how I keep looking in the other mirror? I'm looking out for people, forklift guys. Of course, you're looking to make sure you don't hit the truck that's parked right there. Now, I have to slide the wheels, the axles of the trailer back. Well, we gotta get ourselves in a straight line in order to do that. So I'm gonna get in a straight line and I'll check back. Okay, so here we go. In order to slide your tandems, which are the axles of the trailer, back, there's a little release button. You press it, you pull it, and there's some pins that lock those uh, axles in place on the trailer. So as long as the trailer brakes are locked or set and um, the pins are loose, if you pull forward or back, it'll slide those axles forward or back uh, on the trailer. So from there, you see me rocking it. That's kind of testing it to make sure that they're locked back in place. And I do all of that from the cab of the truck. When you release the brake, it pushes those pins back out and you just pull forward and back a couple of times to make sure that they locked in place. 
pretty easy, right? From there, you just back up uh, to the dock. Of course, the doors are already open to the trailer, and you basically back up till you hit something. Now, you don't want to slam into it. You got to be very, very gentle. And I try to be gentle when I'm sliding my tandems, too. But just go back till you hit something, set your brakes, kill the engine, and wait to get loaded. Once all that happens and they load you, there'll be a little green light. You can kind of see the green light flashing all the way to the right of your screen. But uh, once that light will be red while they're loading you. The light turns back green, you go pull forward, release the pins, and then guess what? The wheels to the trailer, the brakes are locked, so you back up and set it where you want it. You see where it says CA 40 feet? That's California. In California, from the kingpin of the trailer, which is the front, to the center of the rear axle, the center of the rear, look at that back tire. It can't be more than 40 feet long in California. Every state has their own length laws and stuff, but California is pretty strict. So we have the little sticker right there so we know exactly what's legal and we don't go past it. So there you go. There's your tandem sliding lesson. Well, like I said earlier, it was back to Colorado from there, and that's where I am now. Check this out. Got my Glade plug in because I have to have a fresh smelling, clean smelling, sweet smelling truck. Um, <laughs> don't judge. So anyway, uh, where was I? Ah, yes, Colorado, that's where I am. That's where this video ends. I'm just, my brain is fried, y'all. This video was such a struggle to put together from start to finish. I actually had to scrap my original video, delete it, and start all over. It just wasn't working. Anyway, this is the finished product, and I'm halfway proud of it, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. I'll continue to make more, and I hope to see y'all on the next one. So until then, this is Jason, signing out.